Okay. So I'll I'll get started. I think Ron, you have already uh, given an overview of what UiPath does. Uh, but I think before we go into success stories and and how our clients are leveraging us in in banking, I just want to level set on why automation specifically in banking. So if anybody has read McKinsey's report this year on banking, they talk about diff, a great divergence between leaders and laggards. And what these leaders are doing differently is uh, a disproportionate usage of AI and automation. And uh, if again, you go under the hood, you will find that the leading banks and capital markets and financial services firms are basically using our technology for three reasons. One, to improve the customer experience. Uh, think about channels, think about contact centers. How do you address the customer requests uh, in, a, in a first call resolution way or reducing the AHDs? Second is, these banks have a lot of legacy systems. They work really fine, but they give legacy experience. So they are using UiPath to create a glue, create an integration, become a front to back digital bank. So although they have very nice front ends, it's the middle and the back office which continues to have legacy experience and UiPath is one of the ways to address it. And last but not the least, automation has become a key value driver in this whole era of great resignation to retain, attract new talent because uh, the new demographics are asking for automation. They are asking for similar experience as they do it on their phones, on their apps, uh, and, 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 you know, et cetera. So if you look at the, what analysts are saying as far as, uh, you know, state of automation and financial services, it's a great, uh, you know, sort of three little statistics. McKinsey says almost half of the work that happens today inside a bank is actually automated. A lot of double entry, a lot of swivel chair work happening. If you look at last two years of pandemic, that's when FS firms accelerated. They doubled down, tripled down on automation and they did an amazing survey, which found 93% of all the firms went ahead and invested more into a technology like you are But you know, as BCG service says, we are just scratching the surface and a lot of promise holds as far as the future is concerned from automation. We here at UiPath, we tend to look at or have a vision of automation across the enterprise. Now, people would say, what does the across the enterprise mean? And it will help to use four pillars to really understand those use cases, areas, which makes it clear in terms of what does that enterprise automation look like. Uh, if you start with the first pillar, which is think of them as digital labor. These are, you know, what we call as unattended robots. These are the robots that work in the background. Uh, think about lending operations or data reconciliations or KYC processes. KYC is an example, a common example, let's say for an institutional client, you have to collect the data across multiple systems, go to website, create uh, the whole KYC package for an institutional uh, you know, customer. So you could do it, give it to a back office robot or unattended automation, and it could run in the background and complete its job and bring the result to the associates or the analysts. However, not all the processes in a bank are you know, manifested in such a way. Uh, there are a lot of processes that are done by customer facing roles. Think about channels, branch bankers, contact center, where you cannot replace them, but you can augment them and more importantly, amplify them. Think about contact center agent uh, who may take 15 minutes to solve a very pesky customer problem. If you can give a digital assistant, almost like an Alexa to that contact center agent, uh, you would find that she or he would be able to close the calls quicker, uh, would be able to have better NPS scores. And these automations help them to uh, go into multiple applications, get the 
information they're looking for, in some cases, also help them resolve uh, the customer request while the customer is on the phone itself. Some personas, some roles in banks are also asking for building their auto automation. So there are personas like uh, junior investment bankers, investment research teams, data analytics teams. Uh, they are very technically savvy. So they have been asking banks that why don't you give us technologies like UI Path Studio X and let us build it instead of just the technology tools. This is a democratization and broadening the number of users. Uh, you know, my previous uh, speak uh, uh, panelist was talking about low-code app development. Think about low-code, no-code automation development. And that's the third pillar. Not all the processes are simple, business rule driven, deterministic. A lot of processes need AI, machine learning, OCR. So we have packaged all those technologies under the hood. Uh, so think about lockbox processing, where you have to extract data from checks, or my favorite, mortgage originations. A typical mortgage package will have 200, 300 documents. You need more than just RPA. You need intelligent OCR, machine learning, AI, to be able to digest and get the information, extract the insights from those documents. And that's what we have provided natively into our platform. So these four pillars will give or, or will be able to uh, handle the vision or the vision of an enterprise wide or a fully automated uh, enterprise across the companies. But, you know, I have said about theoretical concepts, uh, let us look at specific use cases. So when we go to the market, we go with these nine ready or nine very, very highly leveraged use cases, scenarios across the enterprise. And you will find that they fit very neatly with those three value drivers that we spoke of earlier. Uh, customer servicing, this is my favorite, especially the email automation part of it. I'll talk about a case study uh, you know, quickly. Retail lending, uh, especially in this whole high, high interest mark, uh, uh, macro, we're finding that a lot of the banks and mortgage firms are saying that we have to differentiate ourselves. And how can we use UiPath to reduce time to close a loan? Client lifecycle management, uh, client onboarding today, even today takes 40 to 45 days. And clients are asking us, why can't we use process intelligence and automation to reduce the time to onboard the client? Because it's not about process efficiency, it's about revenue leakage uh, that can happen if we delay the onboarding as well. Similar use cases in cards and payments, post trade, as well as wholesale banking, I won't go into detail uh, just because of uh, the time constraint today, but very similar journeys are coming to the top. And finally, uh, if you look at the investment banking, a uh, lot of investment banks, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, about eight of the top 10 investment banks are using our technology where junior bankers are creating their own automations. Let's say to create a customer pitch deck or to create a prospect pitch deck or to create uh, a presentation that can be taken to their seniors in terms of different M&A deal ideas. A risk and audit, and often one of the last functions to get automated. Uh, we are finding a lot of traction with second and third line of defense. Uh, these are uh, the business functions which do not typically have a lot of automations. So they are leveraging the technology to automate the entire GRC or the risk life cycle. And finally, but not the least, ESG is the hottest topic. We are working with a lot of banks. Uh, to automate the finance mission reporting, SEC disclosure reporting, and many, many use cases. I'll take a double click on customer servicing and bring to you one of the real world use cases. Uh, even today, you know, today, May 2022, we find that the banks are managing customer servicing using inboxes. Hundreds of those inboxes and literally hundreds, if not thousands of FTEs monitoring those inboxes where customer request will come. It will be 
sorted in certain order or in certain category, and then somebody will act on it. Let's say address change. Think about uh, beneficiary changes. Think about uh, any issues with fee. What we have been working on is an AI center solution from UiPath, which almost you know, intelligently detects the intent, whether it is a customer complaint or a customer request, it prioritizes the high value emails or requests. And then not only stops in terms of sorting it, it goes ahead and starts auto servicing it. If an email has to be sent back to the client or a certain change has to be made on the back end systems. It is a massive use case. Some of the numbers that I'm putting here are actually on the lower side. Uh, but if you look at one of the case study, we are working with a top three, top four US bank. And the numbers that they are projecting is something like a 20 million uh, you know, annual savings just on 10% of those inboxes. Amazing you know, use case or a case study. If you look at history of RPA, two or three years back, these kind of use cases were not possible because everybody was talking about just very robotic and very repeatable, uh, you know, use cases. In this case, we have embedded our out of the box machine learning models, uh, which help uh, these banks auto sort and auto classify and service these emails. Now, if you zoom out, uh, we have about 2,100 financial services clients uh, across the globe. I would say one of the very few organizations which have equal weightage across Americas, Europe, as well as APJ. Uh, these are only four banks that I'm highlighting here for your benefit. Uh, but as you can see, you know, I call it a 3B slide value. Most of our banking clients are leveraging tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars from savings and savings could come from operational efficiency. It could also come from loss prevention. It could come from uh, some of the top line growth as well uh, using automation. Uh, second is velocity. Most of the digital transformation uh, programs take a long time. In our case, typically year one is the when uh, the cash flow positive positivity uh, you know gets in. And last but not the least is versatility. Most of the automation platforms work really well in the back office, while we are seeing highly versatile automation both in front as well as in back office. I spoke about contact center, loan servicing, cap markets, trade finance, uh, the list is endless. Uh, some of these numbers that you're seeing actually in case of this Japanese bank, these numbers are part of their audited annual report, which they publish uh, saying that, you know, this, these are the numbers that we have saved using UiPath. So something which is quite public and uh, out there uh, for everybody's consumption. I know I went through in a whirlwind, uh, you know, as, as a whirlwind through the, uh, through, the uh, through the material. But Ron, happy to answer any questions. Uh, I do see, uh, you know, in case I do see question with from Muzammel, which says, can you give us any examples of risk associated with using UiPath or any other automation tool, and any ideas how to manage those things? And one other thing, Amit, that's coming from Musamil, who works with the Federal Home Loan Bank in Indianapolis, to give it a little bit of context, Absolutely. where he oversees IT governance, obviously a critically important role at a major financial institution. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a valid question because you know, financial institutions are heavily regulated. And uh, any automation, right? I mean, irrespective of UiPath or any other technology, uh, there is always an intent uh, from the uh, internal teams, you know, risk and audit teams to have that comfort feeling. So the way I would answer it is the risk uh, or governance comes in three sort of, you know, layers. The first governance is, are we even automating the right processes? So we have inbuilt that right into a technology called Automation Hub. It allows you to ensure, put your own policies and governance structures to ensure that is it even the right process to go into uh, ideation. Second is, once the process has been identified, are we using best practices, enterprise 
architectural guidelines, for example, uh, you know, application access, all those policies can be natively built into the platform itself. So you could use our workflow analyzer to ensure that, let's say, IT policy dictates that such and such website cannot be automated. You can put it right there into the uh, into uh, you know the technology in, into the platform itself. So it allows better governance. And last but not the least is on an ongoing basis, right? I mean, uh, first is the preventative, the second is the predictive part of it. The monitoring is highly visible. You can think of almost like a cockpit view using our orchestrator, which allows you to monitor, create the audit trail, create the acts, you know, ensure that people who have the access, uh, what are they doing? And you have almost like a, a vantage point of how these automations are being run, who's running them, when they were run, and if there is anything that doesn't fit the risk framework services. That's how I would like to answer it. Uh, there is a risk associated with process ideation, uh, how tech automations are built and how they're monitored. All right, one other question before we move on to our final AWS. And this again comes from Tony from Gettys Federal. Yeah. He wanted to know how easily you can scrap web data where the content or data isn't neatly defined. You know, it's like, how do you edit a PDF versus a Word document, so to speak? And maybe you could comment on the various programs or APIs or tools that UiPath has to deal with this. And I will, again, connect you with Tony for more detailed discussion afterwards. Absolutely. Uh, this is our sweet spot, Tony. Uh, you know, uh, we can, you know, obviously uh, interact really well with web uh, applications, or, or with websites. A lot of equity research firms leverage us for the same reason. Uh, there is a lot of intelligence that we've built into our technology, both using the DOM of that particular web page, as well as using our proprietary computer vision. Happy to do a deep dive with you when one of the more technically proficient person from my team can uh, do a deep dive and explain to you how this works at our end. 